Come on, I'm excited about the word. I believe in Bible study, amen. This will be sort of that tonight. Uh, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. We've been talking about freedom. We've been in freedom. Can you say it? Can you say freedom? Freedom. Liberty. Amen. We're going to continue in that vein tonight. We're going to read verse 10 in chapter 6 of Ephesians through verse 20. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Are you there? It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therefore, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Thank God for the reading of his word. Tonight's teaching, we're going to talk about freedom fighters. Freedom fighters. Uh, uh, we, we, we've covered some things. We talked about sin. We talked about being free from religion. Amen. We talked about being, being delivered and set free, that, that truth is so important. And I think that the, the writer here does a good job of giving us some parameters that we must understand on how to be free. So here's the thing. Jesus made us free, but we have to work to keep that freedom. Are you hearing me? Jesus, hold on. When you got saved, he set you free. Come on. He, said, he gave you the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He said you may walk freely. Watch this. But there's work to do for you to stay free. That's why the scripture says in Galatians 5, what? Be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So what happens is when we get saved now, Christ frees us. And then over time, if we're not careful, if we're not walking in the wisdom of God, we get entangled again with yokes of bondage. You follow me? Things are pulling on our soul, old relationships, come on, all old desires. Those things, are pu they're pulling us backwards, and we get entangled again. Amen? Maybe you can relate to that. Where are my uh, double Dutch, old school double Dutch jumpers? Man, if times changed, you get tangled up in the rope, and it's like, start over. Let's look at the verses here that we read, Ephesians 6 and 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Our strength has to be in God's power. That's, I think that's where we miss it is we try to, we try to be strong. You know, something happened in the family. We say, I'm trying to be strong. No, no, no. He says, let the weak say I'm strong. Because that, that will lean you or tempt you to now put confidence in the flesh. And if we put confidence in the flesh, it is by the grace of God that we get our strength. Y'all, you're hearing me today. So it says, be strong in the Lord. Not be strong. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, not ours, put on the whole armor of God. Whole, entire, complete arm of God. Now, I, I want to say to you here that there are seven specific things that the scriptures that we, we just read give to us to put on the whole armor of God. And, you know, seven is the number of completion. 
Are you with me? So seven makes it whole in itself. So I want us to dive through this as we walk through this now. It says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, that word wiles, it means missiles. It means darts. It means, it means tricks. It means games. It means that the things that the devil does to pull on us to get us in a place now to get us back entangled. Remember, God has already set you free. Are you hearing me? You're set free. Now, what you got to do is you got to walk these things out so that you stay free. Okay? So when you get freedom, watch this, you now have to guard freedom. Say, I got it. Now, I guard it. These things are going to fight to help you maintain your freedom. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You must understand that your fight is not with flesh and blood. It's not with your family. It's not with your skin color or those that are not your skin color. It's not with a Democratic Party or Republican Party or your neighborhood or the wealthy or the middle class. And that. That's not your fight. Are you hearing me? It's not against flesh and blood. Here's what it's against. It's against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So when you understand that, remember, uh, Jesus said himself, he said, if, if Satan's kingdom was divided, he says it would already be defeated, diminished. But his, the, his kingdom isn't, isn't divided. It actually has more order and anarchy than some things in the body of Christ at times because they work together. It looks like they're warring against each other. They're not warring against each other. They're working in unison. They understand order and rank. They understand honor and submission. They understand that one spirit comes in and brings seven other spirits stronger than itself. They understand gateway spirit, how to lead and how to let. Come on now. If we, if we got that concept of kingdom now, we would understand that the enemy he has hierarchy set up. So when you look at the nation, when you look at the world, certain regions of the world, there are certain principalities and spirits that govern certain regions of the world, of the nation. That's why certain sins are more prevalent in certain areas. You can name a city. You can say this is the sin of that city or this is the strong man of that city or this is the principality or area that works there. So gangs run this part of the country and you have fornication high and uh, uh, um, illustrious prostitution legal in this part of the country. And then you'll have uh, drug activity hot in this part of the country. Then you have homosexuality hot in this part of the area. You, you got to pay attention. Those are strong men. And they set up camp and they say we run this. Until a stronger, until Christ now has to enter in. That's why he needs people that are bold, that are not fighting the people, but understand their assignment to the region. Because when you understand your assignment to the region, you will go in like Philip did in Acts chapter 8, and you will change the whole area that was under sorcery. You will change the whole area and the witch. That's when you know you're walking in the power because you deal with the witch too. Verse 13. It says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Now, I want to draw your attention here that in verse 11 it said to stand. And here in verse 13 it says to withstand. I want you to get this. Standing is you being able to ready to face or encounter. Stand is you being in your place of authority where Christ has made us free. He says, now stand, therefore. He says that also in, in Galatians 5.1. Stand in the liberty wherefore Christ has made you free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, what? There is liberty. So he's saying stand in that. You need to now be in your identity to be able to stand. But withstand is a different thing. Withstand is being able to resist with success the opposition that's coming your way. So it's one thing for God to deliver you, set you free, set you on your right path, put you on solid ground, all of that. But now you got to be able to say no to the enemy. That's why you submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. But we, know, we must be aware now of our tools of resistance. Amen? So it goes here in verse 14. It says, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truths. Say truth. Truth, truth is your first tool or weapon or, or uh, item to fight, to fight freedom with. Truth. You must be able to have truth on your inside. John 8.32 says this. We're going to reference this real quick. John 8.32 says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It is key now that we understand truth. Come on, Ephesians 4 says what? That the body of Christ needs to be able to tell each other what? Truth in love, that the body will be edified of itself and that it will grow up. John 8, 36 says this. 
It says, the son, therefore, he make you free, you shall be free indeed. So we must understand that truth is necessary. And the scripture here is saying you need the belt of truth. That's what it's saying, guard your loins. So think about how important it is. Come on, you see the kids now sagging their pants like they don't make belts. The believers are supposed to have their belt of truth. It's supposed to guard your inward parts. It's supposed to guard your secret place. Uh, I believe David said in uh, Psalm 51, he said, God, you desire truth on the inward part. He said, if you ask for it in another way, I would have given you sacrifice, but you want truth on my inside. So we ask for truth today. We must be bound with truth. Say truth. Second, what does it say? Having your breastplate of righteousness. Breastplate of righteousness. Now, this is important now. This is dealing with the heart. Think of, think of what it's covering. It's saying having your loins girt with truth. Now, having on the breastplate of righteousness. I must have on my inside a concept of righteousness. If I don't have a concept of righteousness, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to operate in works. I must understand that I'm operating in righteousness. Reference scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 21, last, chap, last verse in that chapter says this. It says, for he, hath made us to be, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So I need to understand by faith now, watch this, Jesus made the transaction. I'm not working for righteousness. I am righteousness by faith. I'm not working for it. I'm not trying to do good to get it. No, 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 no. It's by faith. It, the, the, the thief on the cross was righteous, and he had done no good works. It was by his belief and faith in Jesus Christ. In that moment, Jesus said, you're going to see me in paradise. Why? Because it's our faith in Jesus, not our works in Jesus. that make us, It's our faith in Jesus, not our works in Jesus. Amen. Another reference scripture for that will be Matthew 6, for you to reference. So we have truth. We have the breastplate of righteousness. Third, what do we have? And have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, this is important. Gospel of peace. Gospel means good news. Now, this peace word here is not your peace and quiet that you function at home. It's not that. It's not the one you, you seek for at the house. What it is is the peace means at one with God. So I have a good news about being at one with God. I have the good news about how to stay at one in relationship with God. That is our third two today, the gospel of peace. Our reference scripture is going to be Romans 10, verse 13 through 15. Romans 10, 13 through 15. And it says this. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Stop. I don't need to go to church. Somebody going to have to preach it to them. Whether that's you taking it at work or you, somebody going to have to preach. How will they believe that don't come with all that preaching? It's amazing that everybody can say everything they want to do, but nobody can preach truth. You can't bring your Bible. You can't wear your Jesus shirt. Think about it now. But everybody else can say anything they want. How can they hear without a preacher? Verse 15. How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So we must understand now, when we come, when we come with the gospel, our feet must be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. So we're coming with good news. We're not coming with condemnation. So when we're walking towards them, they should feel the good news. Now, it doesn't mean they won't be convicted. Don't confuse condemnation and conviction. Conviction comes that they will feel sorry that they will turn. Condemnation comes that they will feel bad and continue to do it. That's the difference. So if you lead them to a place and they feel bad, you say, hey, but here's the answer. Jesus is the answer. I'm going to lead you on out here. There's a way. You do not have to go to hell. You do not have to continue in that relationship. You do not have to stay in sin or whatever it is. I lead them out now. You follow me? Conviction brings to the heart, so you lead them out. But my feet must be shod, covered with the gospel of peace. So I got to be in peace. You got to protect your peace. And the saints are under the understanding now that when it's God, my peace got to leave. How was the assignment of God pulling me from my peace? Your peace should be your reference point. It can be challenging. It can be overwhelming. 
But when I have peace to do it, when I have peace to engage, when I have peace to say it, I'm led by the peace. Remember, peace is at one with God. That's God on the inside. Not everybody happy on the outside. And we confuse peace with everybody like me. On you an assignment from God, somebody not going to like you. Somebody not going to like what you have to say. Somebody not going to like the way you say it. But you got to understand, that's why you got to have the peace of God. When you and God have settled that thing, you better deliver. You better say what thus saith the Lord and get it in and get it out. Amen? Hello? So third is the gospel of peace. Verse 16. It says, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you must be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now, this is so important. Remember there, it says, above all. Your faith is crucial. If we stop believing, none of this works. Do you believe? Where's your faith? I didn't say where your works, where your faith. What scripture are you standing on for what you're asking God for? Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So I should be able to pull a scripture, not to be able to recite a scripture, but that I'm placing my faith in and putting my feet under saying, I'm standing on this word of what God said. Faith, Hebrews 11 and 6 says this, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if we don't have faith, God can't even be pleased with what we're doing. There's another scripture that says whatever is not of faith is sin. So our faith is crucial. So how do we have faith, watch this, if we don't know the word? That's why, so I don't get in my word to be religious or to be dutiful or to say, I read my three scriptures for today. No, no, no. I find, Lord, what am I standing on? Lord, what am I believing you for? What am I in need of right now that you said in your word that is a promise that you said is yea and amen that I'm trusting you for despite what I see, despite what I heard, despite what, despite how long it's been, despite what the doctor report said. I'm in faith. Are you with me? So now I have to quench the fire. So it's going to be your faith. Watch this. When the enemy sends something your way, it's going to be your faith that quenches the darts. So imagine a, a Braveheart, old school. They would shoot. They would dip the, the arrows in oil and burn them and fire them so they would burn up when it hits you, right? But, it, but watch this. They would, they would rub oil on their shields. Their, their shields would be drenched in solution that would put out the fire that from the arrow. So what the enemy sends towards you, if your faith is in the right place, it will diminish that thing. What they said about your marriage, what they said about your money, what they, it, will, it will just hold up your shield of faith, trust God, be able to call. No, this is what they said, but this is what the word says. Can you go in the doctor's room and say what they, you go in with scripture? I, did, I, I, know what they, I know what they might say. I'm ready. Watch this. I'm not ignoring what they're saying. Because the saints love to go in and say, well, Annie, you know what? I ain't buying faith. Uh-uh, no, no, no. I see the report, but this is what the Word says. This is not just what I believe. This is what the Word says, and I believe it. Amen? Amen? Verse 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the next one would be the helmet of salvation. Now, you got you to get this one now. You have to already believe that you are saved unto life already. How many of you seen heaven? None of us, right? So we believe by faith that heaven is our home despite not having seen it. We function from salvation. Are you with me? Romans 1.16 says this. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God Unto salvation. So this gospel that we preach brings us into, to a place of resolve, watch this, where we're not toiling anymore whether we're redeemed or not. When I know I'm bought back, when I know I own it, when I know salvation belongs to me, I function differently. It puts me at a different reference point. We're no longer sinners saved by grace. We're children of God. And if you err, we have an advocate with the Father who's ready to forgive us. He deals with sin differently for those who are his children. 
Hello? You know how some of y'all go to the school and fight for y'all kids? Everybody else's kid, just get them, beat them, expel them. Your kids, you out there fighting teachers for your kids. But that's another story. So we take on the helmet of salvation. So I must understand now in my mind, I must know that I'm saved. I must have the mind of Christ. Philippians chapter 2, he says, let it, the thinking not robbery to be equal with God. So when I understand I'm saved, I am righteous with God. I am redeemed with God. God has brought me back, and now I function, I think, from that place. Amen? And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, you need this. Hello? You need this when you're not feeling well. You need this as your balancer, as your barometer to bring you in, to settle you, to guard you, to put you at peace. Sometimes when you're confused, you might need to just put the word on when you go to sleep. To govern your thought, oh, Lord, my thoughts are everywhere. Oh, my, feet, my heart's everywhere. There's a lot of things going on. It ain't so much as you reading the word. It's not the word setting the atmosphere of habitation over you that nothing can come in and violate you that's contrary to the word. Y'all know my scripture, Hebrews 4 and 12. Why are y'all laughing? I don't like to be mocked. I have the microphone. Don't forget. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So when I have the word, the word of God will come in to any situation and say that's spirit and that's soul. It, it's that fine. It is that fine of a cut. Watch this. And it cut both ways. It don't cut one way. It cuts both ways. And it comes in and separates. But I need the word to defend myself to protect my freedom. It's the word that God's my freedom. It's the promises of God. Watch this. I set the word at the doorstep of my mind. And when thoughts come in that are contrary to my belief, to my future, the word of God says you can come in. Hold on. Let me check your ID. Uh, no, it's a bouncer for y'all who used to club. You had to know the doorman, right? Get, get a little favor. Come on. Call you out the back of the line. You know somebody? Well, the word of God is standing at the door of our hearts and our minds, but it's not going to give you a pass unless you line up. That's why you got to know it. So now you have the power and authority to pull down thoughts, to cast down imaginations, to cut off relationships despite how you feel. When you know they're not producing the will of God. Amen. <laughs> so the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. Watch this, verse 18. This is number seven. Praying always... With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. There's some people who do some prayers, but they're from the soul. <laughs> He's saying if you pray from the spirit, this is going to help you guard your peace. Make your supplication and prayer always in the spirit. We have to pray in the Holy Ghost. Hello, when we get saved, we, we had other spirits, we had other demons that were operating in us. Now, the Holy Spirit has to come and rest and dwell in us. And now we have to pray from that place. Father, I thank you right now, and I come out of my natural understanding. You're going to need some time that you pray alone in the Spirit. Because everything is not, watch this, if all your prayers are waiting for your mind to catch up for, then you're limiting the Spirit of God. Because our mind can't process everything in, in due time. Our mind personally doesn't know all the things to the Spirit. They have to be revealed unto us. So now I come out of my own understanding. So I tap into the Spirit and allow the Spirit to allow my, lead my spirit in prayer. And I allow my soul and my mind to get understanding and revelation later. Are you hearing me? This is going to guard you in freedom. Watch this. This keeps you from being out of, in control all the time. You know, we love to control our prayers. And Father, and I just want to direct him, and Lord, and we just want to send him. We just, and we're really just talking and just saying professional words and sounding all neat. And sometimes your prayer needs to be ugly with some tears. Your prayer needs to minister to you. 
You don't need to be navigating all your prayers by your own mind and your own place. No, no, no. Uh, Jude, Jude verse 20 says this. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So with the prayers of the supplication of the saints, I'm going to pray in the Spirit. Now, these are seven things that we just went over that the Scripture says you're going to be able to withstand the devil. So the devil can be as busy as he wants to be. If you got truth operating in your life, if you got the righteousness on the inside of you that you're seeking righteousness, that the gospel of peace is your reference point. Hold on. I'm speaking peace. I'm at one with God. I'm operating by faith. Salvation I already have. I have the word of God on the inside of me, and I pray in the spirit. It's saying you're going to be protected. You're going to have the victory. You're going to be able to maintain your freedom. Now, watch this, what Paul says here in verse 19. He says, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may, that I may open my mouth boldly. What is he saying? Talk to me, church. What is he saying? To make known the mystery of of the gospel. He said, when I get free, I'm going to be able to deliver this word with boldness that other people will be made free. See, free people, free people. See, you know you're free when you're able to speak boldly. This is who I was. This is who I am. That's what I used to do. This is what you should be able to see somebody who used to do what you used to do and be able to call them out. You get a boldness. Why? Because you know you're free. Not by what you did, but by what he did, you now believe, and you stand in, and now you guard what you got with these principles now. You got the word of God working. You got your faith working. You got truth working. on. I don't run from truth. I run to truth. And now I'm bold with my gospel. He says in verse 20, for that which I'm an ambassador in bonds, that therefore I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Why are you afraid to share what God has done for you? Everybody else, everybody else coming out of the closet? When you going to have a closet breakout? Come on, come out of the bedroom, bathroom, come out of something. Have a coming out party. G give me Isaiah 61, Daniel, and we're going to close with this. Give me Isaiah 61. God wants us free indeed. Free people, free people. Hurt people, hurt people. Bound people, bind people. Are you hearing me? Isaiah 61, I want you to look at this. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The Amplified says those who are spiritually and naturally bound. So the gospel, when we get free and we come with this good news of peace, is to set people free from everything. Emotionally, spiritually, financially, mentally, psychologically, whatever it is, they need to be set free from all forms of bondage to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. That's the church. So it's okay to mourn, but God don't want you mourning forever. To give unto them beauty. Y'all like that part. Take these ashes. Come on, take this burnt up stuff. Take this stuff of old. Take this stuff of mourning. That's what it means. They will put ashes on their head in mourning and walk around in sackcloth and ashes. No, take these ashes. Give me that beauty. The oil of joy for mourning. Where's your joy? You're saved. You're supposed to have some joy. Come on, I have to unfollow some folk. All their posts are like sad and sappy. And pray for the dog and pray. For, man, you're bringing me down. You know what? I ain't going to unfriend you, but I am going to unfollow you. I need to keep my faith. Faith come by seeing. Seeing them tired posts is bringing me down. 
trying to stay in a place. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Come on, it's okay to have gone through something, but that not, that's not supposed to be your constant state. You lost something, you lost someone, you lost a job, you lost a loved one, you lost, whatever you lost, it's okay to mourn. But your state is not supposed to be continual mourning because then you're not walking in freedom and somebody's waiting on you to be free. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Verse 4, and they shall build the old waste, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Verse 7, for your shame. See, see, this is where you got it. You got don't run from your don't run from that shameful season. Weigh it up. Be like, I was sad from this day to this day. I was I was broke from this day. To, you got to weigh it up. Why you got to weigh it up? He says, for your shame, you should have double. How are you gonna know what your double's supposed to look like if you keep running and blinding your shame? No, 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 no. I'm gonna double that thing. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to give you wealth. I'm going to replace it. I'm going to do the exchange with you. And for your confusion, they shall rejoice. How many of you had a confused season? You didn't know if you was coming or going. You didn't know if you was going to live or die. Come on, you didn't know if you was going to wake up the next morning. You just Mind playing tricks on you? He said, for your confusion. You shall, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. The everlasting joy shall be unto them. When you get free, you're going to start rebuilding some stuff. You're going to start restoring some stuff. You're going to start reviving some stuff. You're going to be, watch this, you're going to be able to replenish some things. You're going to be bubbling on the inside now. To where the people that get around you, they're going to say, oh, you different. This is new. I ain't never seen you. It's, the, it's God on the inside of me. Do you hear what I'm saying? And it's not just for you. Don't you focus your freedom. It's not just for you. Somebody got to see you free. Think it not strange that Jesus will go deliver them and then have that man walking with his bed on the Sabbath, through their service. He would do it intentionally. Isn't that the man that was at the gate begging? Isn't that the man who was born blind? Isn't that the, isn't that the woman who was caught in the act? He would deliver them and then have them walk through the, because their freedom was never about them. Their freedom was to give glory to God. God wants you free indeed. And if he has set you free in your mindset, I want you to say, I got freedom. Now are you going to guard it? You got to guard it with what we've covered tonight. You got to guard it with your, tr you got to, come on, you got to be hungry for truth. You got to be hungry for righteousness. No, 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 I am right. No, 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 I am the righteousness of God. I am the, I know, I know what I did. I know what I said. I am the righteousness of God. I know what they call me. I know the nickname they used to say, but I am the righteousness of God. I do have faith. Hey, I believe again. I, I'm stirred up again. God, I'm standing on your word again for what you said and what you did. Lord, I love you right now. I'm standing on your word in faith. I am saved. I am redeemed. I am blood bought. I am washed. Come on, free people, stand to your feet. Come on, free people, stand to your feet. Father, we thank you tonight for these free people. 
Those who are under the sound of my voice, we thank you for freedom that you have provided, that you graced us and granted us with. Now, Lord, we stand right now in agreement with the freedom. Lord, help us to put and implement in place the pillars, the things that we need to guard the freedom that you have given us. And Father, we thank you right now that there are no areas of guilt. There are no areas of shame. There are no areas of condemnation. There's no areas of fear. There's no area of bullying. There's no area of intimidation. There's no area of manipulation. There's no area of witchcraft that's on the inside of us that will make a doorway for demonic activity, that will make a doorway for deception to get on the inside of us, that we will be deceived, that we will be bound again. We stand in liberty tonight. We stand in freedom tonight. We stand in power tonight. We stand in authority tonight. And we thank you, Lord God, for the tools to help keep us free. Come on. We thank God for freedom free in our mind. Hey, I get my sleep back. I'm getting my rest back. Hey, I'm getting my voice back. I'm getting my conversation back. I'm getting my praise back. I'm getting my tone back. Shout like you're free. Father, I thank you for freeing me. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You will not be bound. You will not be stuck. The spirit of the Lord God is upon you to preach the God. The anointing has broken you free from every yoke of sin, from every yoke of bondage, from every yoke of stuck, from every yoke of whatever. The anointing has set you free. Father, we thank you for sound minds tonight. You have not given us the spirit of fear. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So we thank you tonight that what you're doing in us, Lord God, will be manifest and seen by the world. Not for our glory, not for us to boast, not for us to brag, but that through the grace of God, the freedom that we now have been given and we acknowledge and are aware of, that we will guard, we will walk it out before your people, that they will see the fruit, that they will see our good works and glorify our Father, which is in heaven. We will point them to you when they ask us how. We will point them to you when they ask us who did it. We will give them your name. We will give them your ways. We will give them your truth. We will give them your principles. We will give them your word when they ask us how did we do it. It was by the grace of God that I did it. It was by the grace of God that I didn't kill myself. It was by the grace of God that I didn't go crazy. It was by the grace of God that I didn't kill somebody. It was the grace of God in me, working in me, working on my mind, telling me things had to be different, telling me that I had to change, telling me I had the power to do it different. Thank you, God, for enabling me with your grace that we can do it different. I don't have to choose my own ways. We lean not to our own understanding. We acknowledge you in everything we do. We're free. Thank you for the blood of Jesus which watches us. Thank you for salvation and what you did on the cross. Thank you for setting us straight with your word. Thank you for calling us out of crooked places and dark places and deceptive places and hurt places. We thank you, Lord, that we stand in freedom. Holy Spirit, help us guard with wisdom the freedom that we have been enabled to stand in. Let us walk in it freely with liberty and wisdom and navigate this thing, Lord God, that when people see us, they see you. We give you praise and honor tonight that we will guard what you gave us with all diligence. In Jesus' name, if you agree with that, shout amen. Shout to the Lord like you're free. Free people, shout. Father, we thank you tonight. For those who under the sound of my voice who don't know Jesus as Lord and as Savior, I'm going to welcome you right now to be a part of the kingdom of God. And we do that by faith. It is not by you doing anything. It's not even by you attending a church. It is by your faith in Jesus Christ alone. And we declare today that if you want Jesus, repeat after me. Say, Father God, I accept Jesus right now as my Savior and as my Lord. Sin, I'm done with you. Satan, I'm done with you. I belong to Jesus from this day forward. I give my heart to him. I give my life to him today and forevermore in Jesus name 
Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me today, we believe that you're saved, you're blood-bought, you're in the kingdom of God. You've been grafted in, drafted out of the kingdom of darkness, brought into the kingdom of light. We want to hear from you here at World Champions. Email us. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Email us at saved.worldchampions.org. We want to get some information to you to help you with your walk with Christ, to help you walk this thing out and be victorious and be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Amen? We thank God for you. If you're under the sound of my voice and you do not have a church home and you feel a prompting and a tugging that you want to be a part of a kingdom of God in this local church, listen, email us at info at worldchampions.org. We will get some information to you. This is not the season for you to be without a church home. You need to be in a family. You need to be in covenant. You need to be connected. Email us at info at worldchampions.org. We'll get some information to you on how to be a covenant member of World Champions Church. This is Pastor Marcus. This is World Champions. Until next time, we'll see you. God bless you and God keep you.